Hi, I'm Dr. Jose Antonio. I am the CEO of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. I'm also a researcher at Nova Southeastern University. And today I want to talk to you about some of the top myths that we find in the fitness and sports nutrition industry. Perhaps the biggest myth out there is that eating a higher protein diet or protein in general is bad for your kidneys. I actually did a study, we published it last year, in which we gave male bodybuilders a high protein diet up to about 3.3 grams per kilo and there were no harmful effects on kidneys, on their liver, uh, and even their blood lipids were perfectly fine. So that really is a myth that needs to rest. Another interesting myth about protein is that it leaches calcium from your bones and makes your bones brittle. This again is probably second to the, the protein harming your kidneys myth. We have actually done uh, studies looking at trained women who consume a high protein diet and have found that their bone mineral density doesn't even change. So the fact that people claim that it demineralizes your bone has no basis in fact. Perhaps one of the more amusing myths, this is something you hear in the gym a lot, uh, the reason you're sore is because you're building up a lot of lactic acid in your muscles. And, and actually massage therapists lo love saying, well, I'm gonna massage the lactic acid out of your muscles so you won't be sore. Well, that couldn't be farther from the truth because the fact of the matter is lactic acid or lactate is actually the correct word, has nothing to do with delayed onset muscle soreness. Delayed onset muscle soreness is due primarily to eccentric loading or ne doing negatives um, or doing unaccustomed exercise and you end up basically causing micro tears in your muscle fibers. What lactate is, is basically a fuel source. Your heart uses it, your brain uses it, your muscle uses it, even your kidneys use it as fuel. So lactate is not a meta metabolic poison, it doesn't cause soreness, and in fact, it's something that your body loves to use as fuel. Now, another interesting myth is this issue of, you know, the best kind of diet for losing weight or for promoting better body composition. And this is basically how it works. If you get a low-fat, high-carb diet and compare it to a high-fat, low-carb diet, but if you keep protein the same and you drop total calories, the amount of fat loss and weight loss is pretty much the same. Translation, it's protein that drives fat loss. It's not whether you're dropping carbs more. It's not whether you're dropping fat more. It's the total calories that you drop keeping protein the same. Now, there are studies that show that low-carb diets seem to favor weight loss or fat loss, but the reason it does that is because the protein intake is higher. So when you look at these studies, make sure you look at the fine print. Is one diet higher in protein? Because if it is, there tends to be uh, much more uh, fat loss and body weight loss. Another really crazy myth uh, is about creatine and, the, and that it, if you take creatine monohydrate, it causes cramps and dehydration. And what's interesting is there have been studies of people actually exercising in the heat and that folks who take creatine actually perform better in the heat. So the idea that it causes cramps or dehydration has no basis when you look at the scientific literature. Okay, one of my favorite myths has to do with the fact that uh, women will complain that if they start lifting weights, they'll get big and bulky like guys. Which is really kind of amusing because there's like millions of college guys out there who are trying to gain as much weight as possible from lifting and eating, and they're having a hard time doing it. Yet these little petite women who think if they li lift a five pound pink dumbbell, they'll suddenly get gargantuan muscles. When in fact, it is very difficult for anyone, and specifically women, to put on muscle mass or lean body mass. So the idea that you suddenly will just get big and muscular from li for lifting weights and uh, for, for women just has no basis in fact or reality. Another interesting myth has to do with artificial sweeteners like sucralose or aspartame. What's interesting is there is a, a robust amount of data to show that these artificial sweeteners are indeed safe. Now, if you look at some of the animal data, when they give them gargantuan amounts of these artificial sweeteners, certainly it'll cause problems. But in the normal amounts that humans consume, there's no reason to believe that they cause any harm. And in fact, they could serve as substitutes for consuming sugar-filled foods or sugar-filled beverages because in the end, calories still matter. Another interesting myth is that it's just food quality that matters and not total calories. The idea that if you just eat healthy, but you can eat as much as you want, it doesn't matter if you're eating five or 10,000 calories. Well, that's just not true. First of all, calories matter and food quality matters. You can't just ignore one and say the other, the other one's the only important one. If you're overeating 5,000 calories, whether it's healthy food, you're eating like 20 avocados a day, you're gonna put on body fat. Now here's a caveat to that. If you're just overeating a little bit, let's say on protein, uh, let's say 300 calories or 400 calories a day, 
it's energetically very difficult for your body to put on fat. At least that's from the limited data that, that we published through our lab in the last few years. But if you're overeating on carbs and fat, calories clearly matter. You can't just sit down with a big jar of peanut butter, eat it all day and expect not to gain any weight. One of the biggest controversies has to do with your post-workout meal. After you're done training, should you consume your 20 grams or 30 or 40 grams of protein post-workout? Or can you just go home, wait an hour, wait two hours, whatever? Now certainly what some people refer to as the anabolic window uh, lasts for many hours after you work out. So the idea is that, well, I don't have to consume anything immediately after I train because I have all these hours after I work out. Well, oddly enough, that's actually the wrong way to look at it. The question that needs to be asked is this, what value or what benefit is there to not eating? What value or benefit is there to not consuming protein post-workout? And the answer to that is none. There's absolutely no value to it. So the pragmatic answer to that is when you're done training, whether it's lifting, whether it's you've done your cardio, is get that 20 to 40 gram shake immediately post-workout because there's a possible benefit to it and there's no drawback to it. Okay, one of the uh, perhaps biggest myths is about caffeine and whether it acts as a diuretic agent. Now what's interesting is if you look at the data on exercise and caffeine, we know that caffeine is a very strong ergogenic aid, meaning it helps exercise performance. Does it cause you to urinate more or lose fluid? And really, if anything, it might have a very mild diuretic effect, but in terms of whether or not it affects adversely affects performance, there's no evidence for that. So in general, caffeine is not a diuretic. Some people think though, if you consume it with coffee, like let's say high dose caffeine, it might induce a slight effect. But in general, the data seems to show that caffeine is not a diuretic. Another myth surrounds uh, the idea that the best way to lose body fat or weight is through exercise. And what's interesting is that if you look at the data or the studies on exercise alone, it's actually a poor way to lose weight or a poor way to lose fat. And the reason that is, is most people don't exercise enough to matter. It's not like you're riding a bike for two, three or four hours a day. You might go to the gym for 30 minutes, maybe 60 minutes. You're actually not burning that many calories. So what's the primary driver of fat loss or body weight loss? The primary driver is actually diet. Because let's face it, if you exercise hard, let's say you're in the gym for an hour, you might burn 300, maybe 400 calories. That's easy to replace. Now, if you change your diet throughout the day, it's much easier to create a, a caloric deficit to lose fat mass than it is from exercise alone. So the idea that all you gotta do is exercise more or change the way you exercise isn't really an efficient way to lose body weight. It's not an efficient way to lose fat. For more information on sports nutrition and supplements, come back to bodybuilding.com.